Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Authentic Faith Podcast. I am coming to you today live. I'm trying out a new software called StreamYard. So I've been debating it for a long time and finally bit the bullet. So hopefully this is coming to you. You know, you can hear it well and the, and the video is fine. Um, it is broadcasting live on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you prefer to head over to YouTube and watch this, head on over there. I know for some of you who are uh, premium members, you can actually, it's a little bit easier listening to this and watching on YouTube. So head over there. And oh, by the way, if you head over to YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe as well as share with your friends. So today on this Authentic Faith Podcast, we are going to talk about another aspect of God's nature, and we're going to talk about Him as Creator. Now, this is part of my book, and over the next several weeks, probably months, we're going to really dissect what's in the book, The Journey, and talk about it and go through it together. Um, and it's going to go a little bit deeper, so you definitely want to have the book as a companion. So to that point, you can actually head over to Amazon. And if you are a Kindle lover, you can pre-order the Kindle version of the journey today. And it'll be on pre-sale until the 23rd. So as soon as you wake up in the morning on the 23rd, the book will be available to you sitting right in your Kindle. Now, maybe you want the print book. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. You'll be able to order your print book on the 23rd. So how exciting is that? Thanksgiving is by far my favorite holiday. And just to know that two years ago, I embarked on this journey of writing this specific book. And here it is, my book baby. And it's launching on Thanksgiving week is such a gift. So mark your calendars, November 23rd, the book launches, not only in the print version, but also in the audible version. So maybe you're not so much a reader, but you're a listener. Well, I've got you and we will have it available on Audible. So November 23rd, mark the date. So today we're going to talk about an aspect of God's nature that I discuss in the book. God is creator. And in the book, we actually have kind of like an interactive experience with admiring God's creation. And if I look out to my side, I can actually see outdoors and I can see how gorgeous it is outside and just taking a moment to perceive God. Because a lot of times we ask the question, God, where are you? But the real question is, God, am I perceiving you? Because God is everywhere all the time. So God is creator. He is, his abilities are tremendous. So over the next, I would say probably four weeks, we're going to be talking about God as creator because this is a huge aspect to who God is. I mean, you could just literally look outside your window or look at nature, uh, look at your family, look at everything around you. And it's incredible God's design. And it just deserves a lot of time and admiration and study. So we're going to dive into who God is as creator. Now, in addition to who God is as creator, we're also going to be looking into it from a perspective of as someone, as you and I are made in the image of God, made in the image and likeness of God to look and be like him. What does that mean when it comes to creation? What does that mean as creators and co-creators with Christ? So first, we're going to have a lot of scripture today. So in the comments below, I'm going to wind up adding the scriptures for you. So if you want to, um, you know, go in and uh, look into each one, because we're not going to read them all. So I'll have them written out. If you're listening to this on the podcast, it'll be in your podcast notes. So first, let's dive into Genesis 1, because what better way to see God as creator than when he created everything, the earth that we know, everything that we know. Because remember, the only thing scripture tells us about God and the only aspects of God that we know are what he shows us in scripture, scripture from creation on. So who God is outside of earth and the heavens, we don't know. That's just the truth. 
So in Genesis 1, it talks about in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. So just a little side note, if you want to go off on a little trail, um, exploring heavens, plural. So not heaven, but heavens. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said. So today we're going to explore God as creator from the perspective of words and how powerful words are because God created most of creation using words. I say I say most of creation because there is an aspect of creation that God used more than words to create. And we'll dive into that in a future podcast. So that's verse three. It says, God said, let there be light. Everyone knows that verse, right? God said, let there be light. And then in verse six, it says, then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And verse seven, it says, and that is what happened. And then in verse nine, then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together. And after that, it says, and that is what happened. So God, God created everything that we see, the universe, the skies, the heavens with his words. And he spoke. Now, before he spoke, his imagination came into play. And we're not going to talk about that today, but just a little bit of a teaser that we're going to have a special guest to come on and teach us about imagination, God's imagination and our imagination and the power of imagination. So stay tuned for that. But today, as we talk about words, I really want to focus on how powerful words are. And we must be careful with our words because they are powerful. But words were given to us to create. And just as God created the earth and the heavens and everything that we know with his words, we also have the ability to create. And that's how much power is in it. So we can create just like we can destroy. And we can give life with our words just as we can kill. So our words are super important and we need to be vigilant of it. So I want to dive into um, quite a few scriptures and we may not get to them all today for the sake of time, but then you can study on your own and I'll be sharing the verses with you. So let's go to Matthew 4, 4, and we're going to focus first on who God is as creator and how important his word is to us as creator. Because before we can understand who we are as creators, we need to understand who he is because he is the measure. He is the standard. So in Matthew 4, 4, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, but Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So here I want to emphasize how powerful God's word is and that it is nourishment for our souls. We need God's word. God's word has the power to fuel us, to fill us, and to give us everything that we need to have life. Now let's go over to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, 105, and it says, guys, I'm still a paper Bible person, so this is not changing. Every once in a while, I'll read electronic, but that's because my Bible is not in front of me. So, okay, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. God's word is our lamp. It's what guides our way. It's what directs us. And God is always speaking. And there's power behind his words. His words are empowering. His grace is empowering. So when we live out his words, it helps guide our path and teach us the way that we should go. And Psalm 24, 35. 2435. Oh, I knew it. I didn't write down what book this is, but this verse talks about how God's word is eternal. It's endless. There's no end to his words. It's so powerful that it's eternal. So in the meeting notes, I'll share that with you. So let's go to Luke. Now let's go to Luke 645. So just as a side note, 
Um, one of the foundations to the book that I share is the first journey. We talk about who God is because we must understand who God is and what he's who he is because he sets the standard. If we don't know who God is, we're never going to truly understand who we are because we're created in the image and likeness of God. So when we discover who God is and we know God's nature, we can know who, who we were created to be. And then that'll help us discover who we really are. Sorry. So Luke 6, 45. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an ev uh, evil heart. And this is the part that I wanted to focus on. What you say flows from what's in your heart. So our words are an indication of what's in our heart. So while our words are super important, we must always remember that God is love. The foundation to who he is, as we talked about last week, is love. Everything he does and everything that he is comes from love. And that should be the same for us. Our foundation, our core, everything is from love. So when our words are spoken, it should come from love. It should come from a place of love. And that's the perfect creation. That's the whole creation. That's the, the complete creation, right? If we're living in accordance to who, how God has called us to live. But our words are a reflection of what's going on in our hearts. And this is why we need to be careful what comes out of our mouth, because ultimately what comes out of our mouth is telling us what's really going on in our hearts. And maybe the words that have been coming out of your mouth are not words that reflect what you want in your heart or what's in your heart. Well, I have a podcast about that where I talk about taking those negative emotions and how to transform them so that they can work for you and teach you how to go to your heart, go to the heart of the matter and heal whatever is causing those negative emotions. So we start minimizing the negative emotions and the negative words that come out. Now, there's so many verses that talk about the power of words, okay? And I'm just gonna read three of them, but there's a whole list and I'll share it with you and you can dive in. And as I always say, I mean, do not take my word for this. I really encourage you. Remember, this is not about my journey, but yours. I have a journey and I'm sharing with you what I've learned because I want you to experience the abundance, joy, peace, and love that I am living. But ultimately, this is your journey, right? I can't experience the abundance for you. I can't experience the love for you. But what I can do is guide you based on what I've learned, and then you can go on your own journey and come to experience these things yourself. So Proverbs 13, 3 says, those who control their tongue will have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. So think about this. Those who control their tongue have a long life. It even affects your eternal life, the words that come out of your mouth. Now, Proverbs 15, 4 says, gentle words are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Guys, this is so powerful. Think about how you could be ministering life with your words. You can literally speak to someone and be speaking life into their life. Now, let's say in, in anger, you're upset and words come out of your mouth that you don't mean. Has this ever happened to you? Hello, it's happened to me before. You just are so angry and you don't know what to do with it. And the words just come out of your mouth. And before you can even stop it, boom, it's there. Aside from it being a reflection of what's really in your heart and something that needs to be dealt with, well, what if those words you didn't mean, do they still have the power to kill and destroy? Unfortunately, they do.
All right, hold on one second, guys, because it told me that I lost my voice. So hopefully we are still, let me just check my mic. Sorry, guys. Okay, so we look like we're okay. All right, so um, so I believe, as I was saying, that words, only words that we believe have power right in our lives. This is why using scripture as words of affirmation, I'm really iffy on because if you're using Bible verses as words of affirmation, but you really don't believe it, it's actually going to cause stress in your life and have the opposite effect because anxiety, as Ford Taylor says, anxiety and depression live in the space between what you say you believe and what you actually believe. So you must believe the words that you're saying in order for it to have an effect on your life. Okay. But what if you speak a word out of anger that you really don't mean? You say something to someone in the midst of an angry moment and you don't mean it. Does that matter? Does that have power? Can that bring life or death? Absolutely it can. And let me tell you why. Because there's now another person involved. And if you say a negative word to that person and they believe what you're saying, whether they believe that you believe it or they take it on themselves, think about the words we speak to a child and how impactful that is, then because they believe it, those words have power and they have the power to kill. But I want to focus more on the power to give life because this is about giving us hope, how we can change things, knowing that our words matter. So pay attention to the words, even the words that you speak about yourself and to yourself. Does anyone else talk to themselves? Because I talk to myself, two hands up, talk to myself, all the, to myself all the time. And it's important that we listen to the words that we're speaking to ourselves because it's an indication of what's going on in the heart. God used words to create the world. They're so incredibly powerful. And the words that you speak also have the ability to create. The question is, what are the words you're speaking creating? Are they creating love? Or are they creating fear? Are they creating life? Are they creating death? Are they creating light? Or are they creating darkness? So I challenge you today for you to come to know God as creator and look into the scriptures about what how powerful his words are and who he is as creator from a words perspective. And then come and, and dive into the scriptures. And there's so many proverbs about the power of words that you can dive into. So I'm going to read the list out loud, but I'll also write it down for those of you um, that want to see it and study. So we've got uh, Proverbs. Let me just read one more Proverbs 18, 20. It says, wise words satisfy like a good meal. Doesn't that remind you of the verse about God's words, how it's it nourishes us and it feeds us? Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right word brings satisfaction. And may we be the type of people that have wise words and right words. May we be the kind of people that reflect who God is as creator and use our words to bring life, to bring light, to bring wholeness, to bring healing. And then we have Proverbs 11, 9, Proverbs 16, 24, Proverbs 18, 20, Proverbs 12, 18, Proverbs 21, 23. And let's read Proverbs 25, 18. Because this is powerful about when we speak lies. Telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe. So it's almost like doing what? Committing murder, right? Think about what Jesus said. You think that killing someone in the flesh is murder, but when you speak certain words, you can actually be killing someone. It's like telling lies about others is like wounding them with a sword or shooting them with a sharp arrow. It's so dangerous to speak lies about our brothers and sisters because it's like hitting them with an axe 
wounding them with a sword or shooting them with a sharp arrow. So I caution you to be careful with the words that come out of your mouth when you're speaking about someone, um, especially when you don't know their life and you're ruining their reputation or saying things. Our words are so very important and they carry a lot of weight because we have the power to create with our words. It's so great and grand but it also puts a lot of weight and responsibility. And we must make sure that our hearts are in a pure place and are reflecting the heart of God so that when we speak our words, they're doing what God did with his words, which is to create, to bring light, to bring wholeness, to bring truth. So that's what I'm leaving you guys with today. I hope this was helpful to you. Don't forget to head over to Amazon and order my book during the pre-order stage if you're a Kindle person. If not, you can wait for the print November 23rd and the Audible as well. And next week we'll be coming together. I don't know if we're going to be talking about imagination or if we're gonna be talking about work. But over the next four weeks, we're gonna dive deep into who God is as creator and who you are as a creator made in the image and likeness of God. Because remember, you were created to look like God and be like God. So it's essential to know who he is so that you can discover your divine purpose on this earth as you live your life to reflect who he is. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this teaching. And if it blessed you, please remember to subscribe and share with your friends and family. Thanks. Bye.